So let's continue on here with example one. Okay, so we're going to try our best here to continue on and see what we get uh, for our answers here. So when I'm doing this now, uh, we have a graph, and let's type this in now. So what I want to do here is I want to type in, uh, go to y equals on your calculator, and what we're going to do now is I want you to press the negative button, which is down below, parentheses, 3 divided by 2, end parentheses, a caret sign, and we're going to, caret sign means exponent again, we're going to put in x as the variable, and press delete to delete anything extra that's on there if you didn't clear it already and go to graph. And when you see the graph here for this problem, notice how it starts up to the left and it goes down to the right. All right, That's what I want you to keep in mind. It starts up here and it goes down to the right. Now when you're looking at this problem, um, let's see what we get for the table. Go to second graph on your calculator and a list comes up. And at negative 2 we get negative 0.4444. Well, so when I plug in a negative 2, I end up getting negative 4 ninths. When I plug in a negative 1, I end up getting negative 0.66666, which is negative 2 thirds. When I plug in 0, I end up getting negative 1. When I plug in negative, uh, or sorry, when I plug in positive 1, I end up getting negative 3 halves, which is negative 1.5. And when I plug in a 2, I end up getting negative 2.25 or 9 over 4. So when I go to plot these, I have a negative 2 here. So negative 2 and negative 4. Or ninths means I go a and over negative two and I go down about a half. Next up is negative one means I go over negative one and I go down about negative two thirds. And then I go over nothing and down negative one. Then I go over one and down one and a half. And I go over two and I go down negative two point uh, two five and I connect them and draw a line. Once again, keeping in mind the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And the reason why it's y equals 0 is because notice how it goes really close to 0 but never quite touches it regardless of how my graph might look. It's going to get really, really close to y equals 0 but it's never going to touch it. And you can see that by going on your graph right, and your list there. Keep going in the negative direction. Right now I'm at negative 18. It keeps getting closer and closer to 0, right? But it's not 0. I have negative 1 e, or yeah, negative 1 uh, times 10 to the negative 4th. Uh, at negative 25 I have negative 4 times 10 to the negative 5th. It keeps getting lower and lower, but it's never touching 0. The idea here is that is your asymptote. It keeps getting closer and closer and closer to 0, but it never quite touches it. Example two now, we are going to graph this. Okay, this is three times um, two to the x minus one minus four. Okay, so what I want to do now is go to y equals again, uh, type in three, then time sign, then a two, then the caret sign because now we're going to the exponent. But what I want you to do now is put a parenthesis sign there. The reason being is this x minus 1, the whole item x minus 1, is being raised to a power. So I want to put x minus 1 all in parentheses. So that is um, x minus 1, then n parentheses, and then a minus 4 afterwards. So you should have 3 times 2 caret sign parentheses x minus 1, n parentheses minus 4. So when you plug that in, press graph, and what I want you to see is that now it starts down here, somewhere down here, and then it goes up, right? Well, go to second graph so we can see our table, and you might be way up in the negatives now, so press down, press the down arrow till you get around where negative 2 is, and oh, found negative 2. Negative 2 says, at negative 2, it's negative 3.625. So when I plug in a negative 2, I end up getting negative 3.625, which is negative 29 over 8. When I plug in a negative 1, I need to get negative 3.25, which is negative 13 over 4. When I plug in 0, I end up getting negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2.5. When I plug in a 1, I end up getting negative 1 as my answer. And when I plug in a 2, I end up getting 2. So let's plug in these points. This means I go over negative 2, and I go down negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and 0.625, so 3.625. It's about there. And the next is I go over negative 1, and I go down about negative 1, 2, 3, and 2.5, which is about there, so 0.25 right there. Then I go over nothing, and I go down 1, 2, and a half, which is right there. And then I go over 1 and down 1, which is right there, and I go over 2 and up 2. So I draw a line and connect it. 
Now what I want you to realize is, in this problem, this line right here is the asymptote. Well, the asymptote here is y equals negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? It gets really close to negative 4. What do you notice in the example? Look at the graph. Right here at the end is a minus 4. In all the other problems, we didn't have a number, a constant term, hanging out there by itself. We had no number. And each time we had no number or 0, our asymptote was at y equals 0. Well, what I want you to keep in mind now is we have a minus 4 hanging out here all by itself. Since we have a minus 4 hanging out here all by itself, this line right here, that line is your asymptote. y equals negative 4 is your asymptote. Right there it is, y equals negative 4. That's the asymptote. So I want you to keep in mind, whatever the number is out here, that's your asymptote. As well, the other thing that I would like you to keep in mind is this number out in front justifies what's happening to it. If you look at the last graph we just did, that was negative, and the graph went down like this. When it's positive, the graphs are going up like this. So whatever this number happens to be is the direction that the graph is actually going. So that's just something for you to keep in mind when you're doing these problems. Okay, so when we come back, we will take a look at the growth factor.